evening, Mustangs fans. Josh Shrebin here, voice of the Peoria Mustangs. Another edition of Around the Stable Coach, a show joined by Mr. Blake Orman. Blake, how are things going so far this week? You said it's been a busy week, and busy is always, right? Always is, always is. We're uh, getting obviously getting prepared for Granite City this weekend, and um, we're just trying to build off what we did last weekend, so it's been a great week. So looking back at last weekend, the Rochester Grizzlies in town, and we'll get to some specifics here in a few minutes, but the weekend as a whole, Friday night, 4-1 win, Saturday night, that 2-1 loss. The the weekend collectively, how did the coaching staff think the boys played? Um, unbelievable, honestly. It was, a, it was a massive step in the right direction, and that's a hockey team that uh, we haven't seen them play like that yet. I think it was uh, kind of the team that we envisioned uh, when we were watching tryouts and stuff, and uh, they finally put it together and and played two great hockey games. And um, we were talking to Guy a lot. Obviously, he was at the games, and um, he, he had said that it was the best hockey games he's seen on that ice in a long time. And I think, you know, both coaching staffs from both teams would agree. I mean, it was just a very fast-paced game. Um, you know, structure was unbelievable. Everyone was finishing their hits, getting pucks to the net, making plays. Um, it was it was a good weekend and and just a massive step in the right direction for us as a team as a team and as a staff. So now getting to brass tax Friday night, that four one win. Chris Condillis early in the first, and then Rochester tying it up a scoreless second period. Kind of both teams just playing back and forth. Third period comes out, 45 seconds in, Jacob Bland netting the game winner. And from there on, it just seemed like you guys applied pressure that Rochester couldn't handle. Was, it was that the feeling that you guys got as well on the bench? Yeah, it was. And I think, you know, the, the game was – it was such an even game, and it was a, a defensive battle for so long. And, um, you know, unfortunately for their goalie, he took a tough shot uh, right from the slot. It was a slap shot right in the head. And, you know, that might have played into it as well. I think, you know, the adrenaline gets you through the rest of that period. And maybe in the third period, he wasn't feeling all right. So we're hoping that he's okay for them. And, um, yeah, no, our guys came out in the third period. We talked in between periods, and they they made a decision. They were going to come out, and, and they were going to leave it all on the line. And they did, I think, you know, right out of the gate. That's an unbelievable play on the wall by Tristan. Uh, he makes that cross ice pass to Blando. They get on a two on one, and um, you know he didn't uh, didn't make any mistakes there. And then, you know, from there you kind of smell blood in the water, and you hope to hope to just keep uh, pounding it on. I think it was Lacoste scored next to right away. It was very quick. I think it might have been the next shift. And um, after that, you know, with the way the game had been going and and the defensive battle it had been, you you like to feel obviously never against Rochester. You'd never feel comfortable, but just with how everything was going and how Cam was playing in that, I think we were confident that we were going to be able to shut it down for the rest of the game. As you mentioned, Zach Lacoste, 12 seconds after Bland. And the angle I have in the press box, he had a shooting lane about the width of a puck, maybe just enough that you could get a fly between the puck and the shooting lane, found the top corner. And it seemed like from there, you always hate to use the terminology cruise control, but it seemed like everything was just rolling in the favor of the boys. Yeah, I think, you know, once that confidence sets in, you know, guys are playing the right way and they see the success that comes from playing the right way. They just obviously stayed playing the right way. And, you know, that's an unbelievable shot by him to get it through all that traffic. I think we had three guys crashing that and there was a lot of bodies in front. And obviously if our guys are crashing that, their guys are trying to box them out. So it makes even more traffic in front. So um, all he had to really do was get it through. I don't think that one was probably seen at all. And you mentioned Cam made some great saves. 31 of 32, Cam Pendleton there Friday night. Is this the Cam Pendleton that we can expect to see? He's making saves when he needs to make saves, and he was being smart playing the puck, moving the puck. Just And I know we'll get to the Saturday night save here real quick, but he just made some phenomenal saves keeping the, everything moving forward. Absolutely. I think that's the Cam we can expect to see for the rest of the season. That's the Cam that I got to see all last year, and that's why – you know, when Drew took that opportunity and when played D3 this year at the last second, the uh, first name that popped in my mind was Cam Pendleton. I was fortunate enough to be able to be down with him down in El Paso. We had him a lot up with our NA team um, skating with us all the time. So I know what kind of caliber of goaltender he is. I think there's a few things that 
he had talked about with me on the phone before uh, we we got that deal done that he wanted to improve on that uh, he was just trying to break some old habits and stuff. But he, he's a competitive kid. He's athletic and um, he hates to lose. So that's the kind of kid that, you know, can take you a long way. And I think, you know, with the three goalies we have, it, it really instills a lot of confidence in the team and in the coaching staff as well. And then bump ahead Saturday night, pretty much the first 40 minutes of carbon copy of Friday night's game. Two and a half minutes in, Trudell scored from Chesney. Rochester tied up late in the third period. Scoreless second period. What was the vibe in the locker room coming out for that third and final period of regulation from the guys? Uh, we knew it was going to be tough because I think, you know, as much as the day before was such a defensive battle for the first two periods, the, the shots were almost half of what they were the day before going into the third period. So I think it was really locked down from both teams. I think we were very willing to block shots as well, and, and Rochester was as well. And, um, you know, both teams' D zones were closing fast on everything, uh, making no mistakes, really keeping everything to the outside and uh, just taking away um, a lot of high percentage areas. And um, so we knew we were, we were going to have to really work for it. And uh, we did. I mean, we worked all the way to the buzzer. I think our team played great. Um, and Rochester, obviously, that's it's a great shot by that kid. It's an unbelievable shot. And he uh, he didn't make any mistakes where he put it. And and they won the game. Sometimes that's just how it goes. I think we had an opportunity at the end to score there. And, um, you know, that's all you can ask for. I mean, the reps that they got last weekend and, and the way we took a step in the right direction as a coaching staff, you can't be mad. And any, any weekend, you know, you're obviously competitive enough. You want to win every game, but any weekend you can split with a team like Rochester is a good weekend. And Cam Pendleton stopped 32 of 34, another 30 plus save night for Cam. One of the things that I noticed that stuck out about Cam on Saturday, it seemed like to me he challenged a little bit more. And I'm going to revert to a play in the third period. It was a three on one break off of right out of the Peoria or the Rochester zone coming across. And Cam would not budge. I think he could have stared through a boulder wall and made the wall crumble. But he, he stayed strong, made the big save, and kept you guys that with that one goal deficit. Yeah, you know, and that's something that our, one of the things that he wanted to work on. I think our goalie guy, when he watched, it, watched film on him and stuff before he made that trade, was um, that he was a little bit not – say shy but just a little it was a little bit shy to, to kind of challenge and be confident about that and that's one thing that here in Peoria we preach to our goalies is that if you guys challenge and take away that first shot with the way we play there shouldn't be another shot and if there is it's it's not your fault and if you make that first save your stats are going to be unbelievable so he's been working on challenging a lot in practice and he did he got out there and challenged and doesn't give anything um and it, and it makes him obviously makes him look good because his stats don't lie I mean they're pretty good right now and I'm sure he's going to keep building off that and just keep working on what he feels he needs to improve on and that weekend series with Rochester prior to Saturday the the previous five meetings had been in Peoria and a number I shared during the broadcast Peoria was 4-0 and 1 so Saturday night was the first regulation win for Rochester in Peoria since since february 13th 2021 so peoria hanging boys hanging tough against rochester there on home eyes so that was just a stat that i kind of just went back and looked and i saw i was like that was when we used to do interviews by the trash can in the hallway <laughs> yeah that <laughs> I, I know last year they kind of split the series and it was ironic that it was um all rochester won all their games at home and peoria won all their games at home i think um, it's a little bit of a different story the year before that's I think we split with them as well but it was all mixture of it didn't matter where you were they were tough games every single time and um, I don't even I can't even tell you what our record was at home that year against them but I think it was two and two and two and two so yes. um, yeah so it was it's it's just a weird thing that just kind of worked out but no it's a the Rochester is definitely a tough building to plan and I'm sure they'll tell you ours is a tough building to plan as well so that could factor into that. And looking ahead this weekend coming up, the Granite City Lumberjacks in town are out of division opponent this year. We're going to play two in Peoria. And then in January, we're going to play two up in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. Granite City currently sitting 5-0-1. They played a two-game set last weekend out in Gillette, Wyoming. Long bus trip for them. Are you guys anticipating any lingering effects from a 12-ish hour bus ride to Gillette, Wyoming, and then back to Soccer Rapids? Um, I think it plays a factor for sure for anyone, but 
at the end of the day, I mean, they're it's Granite City. They're one of the premier teams in the league, and um, there's a reason why they're always at the top. I mean, they're, they're ran very professionally, and um, I'm sure they're doing whatever it takes to get their players ready, and I'm sure they'll be ready, and we're expecting them to be at their best on Friday, and uh, we just got to try to match what they can bring. And then looking at Granite City, this is something – I've even heard the boys kind of murmur about with Rochester, Granite City, back-to-back -back weekends. And I want to say, I think it was Jacob Bland that said, this is the weekends that are going to separate the men from the boys. And that being said, with film and them only having played five games, how does that work into the way you guys attack film and build a game plan for the weekend? You, you really just have to go off of those five games. I think every team, especially at this level, shows the same tendencies in their games. Um, you know, you make your minor adjustments here and there, but a lot of teams kind of have their systems, and especially a team like Grant, they're very confident in what they do there, and uh, they, they really don't change for anyone else. They do what they believe is going to work, and it, it works for them. It's worked for as long as I can remember. I've played against them, and, you know, their systems are they're good systems, and they always have great players that can execute their game plan. So, um, they're a team that they're not really going to change too much in my opinion. And, um, you know, cause they're, they're so high end and that's just something that we're gonna have to adjust to. And we'll take those five games and see what their tendencies were. And we'll try to match that, um, especially their special teams and stuff. We've already made a couple adjustments to what we're planning on doing. And, um, we just have to make sure that the guys show up and are ready. Cause at the end of the day, uh, you can put as many game plans as you want in place, but if the guys don't, don't strap up their boots and get ready on Friday, then, then you're not going to win. And seeing that Granite City, there's only four matchups head to head this year. What's the level of excitement like for not only you guys as a coaching staff, but being a player, the level of excitement of playing somebody different, kind of getting a little bit of something different with your breakfast in the morning? Um, I, I would like to think our players are very excited to, you know, to rise to the occasion and, and play good teams. I know as a coaching staff, we're extremely excited. We want the hardest possible schedule we can get. Um, that's really, in our opinion, the only way that you're ready for the playoffs when the playoffs do roll around. And that's the, the best way for your players to develop. I don't think you develop if you play bad teams. And um, so we're very fortunate for the division that we're in because of how competitive it is and that our out of division games are Granite City because I think it's going to give us the best opportunities one to grow as a team and, and eventually, you know, try to reach that ultimate prize, which is winning a cup. And two is just to continue our development and reps. I think the better the players are and the more you can execute on your reps and stuff, it just shows um, the growth of your player that, you know, we've already seen so much growth in our players from the start of the season. It's only been, you know, a month and a half. So, um, you know, you just like to see that growth keep going and uh, the, you know, the better the, the opponent you have, basically, I mean, it just it's better hockey and it's better for your guys in the long run. It's going to prepare them more for college and the next level. So you kind of segued to my next question or statement I was going to make. You mentioned playoffs. And no, I'm not talking playoffs just yet. But <laughs> are is a, a playoff like atmosphere is what you guys are kind of expecting with a team like Granite City coming into the Owen Center this weekend? Yeah, we, we are. We know that they're going to bring it and um the one thing that we've noticed in film with them is that they're relentless. They never, their second and third efforts are just as hard as their first effort. There's never a one and done opportunity for them. They never give up on plays. So we're expecting it to be a playoff game this weekend. And, and that's exactly what we want. And we hope our guys rise to the occasion and treat it the same way. And we're trying to get our guys to kind of rise to being able to give that effort on second and third, you know, opportunities to get pucks back and hunt pucks and everything like that. And um, if we can get that mentality instilled in them, then it's going to be, we're going to have a good year. All right, Mustangs fans, opportunity this weekend, playoff atmosphere at the Owen Center, Granite City Lumberjacks in town, Friday night, 6 o'clock, Saturday night, 6 o'clock. If you can't make it to one of them two, be sure you can make it to at least one of them. But if you can make it out to both, highly recommend it. Be a great two-game series for the Mustangs on home ice at the Owen Center. But until Friday night, Blake, thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. This is Around the Stable Coaches Show.